I have been using this OnePlus smartwatch for past few weeks and here is my honest opinion. Guys, you're watching YouTube and if it's your first time here, thank you so much for clicking. Here's where I review smartwatches, smartphones, headphones, etc. So if you're into all that kind of stuff, consider subscribing. For your convenience, everything is time coded along the video timeline. Also, to get a free shout out to any of your social media account in my upcoming video, just comment down below how many times did you see this VidTube shout out icon throughout the video. Good luck! So let's start with price and unboxing. At the time of filming this video, OnePlus watch is listed for only 219 Canadian dollar. You can find the links to its accessories like wristband, cases, chargers, screen protectors, etc. in the video description. As you see, it came in a red box like this one, which is reminiscent to the Apple Watch. And honestly, for those whom it matters, the unboxing experience is the best for the price you pay. Like I have unboxed a lot of smartwatches on this channel, but this feels next level. Inside the box is the watch itself with the wristband attached to it so it's ready to go on your wrist. Underneath the watch is all the paperwork with the setup guide, user manual and warranties. Finally, it's the magnetic charger and it's proprietary. I just wish every smartwatch comes equipped with the wireless charging as it's super easy and convenient so I don't have to carry all these proprietary chargers. Literally, I have like 50 plus proprietary chargers lying around. Finally, it's the OnePlus watch itself. My first impression looking at it was holy, it's so big, it's certainly not meant for smaller wrist. And to make it even worse, there is no size or model option. This 46mm OnePlus smartwatch with stainless steel body is your only option. But boy, it looks sleek. At the back, there are all the heart rate and SpO2 sensors with the charging pins. On the side, there is a built-in speaker. Other side there is the microphone and two buttons. The top right button has OnePlus engraving. Now on the front there is a 1.39 inch AMOLED display and it has the accent rings around the bezel which are not easily discernible. I really like the fluoroelastomer wristband with the accent lining on the top which gives a nice look to this watch and frankly it's quite comfortable to wear. Also, it's super easy to replace this with any 22mm aftermarket pushpin wristband. So I can use the wristband from any of these smartwatches. Now in terms of specs, you can read through all the specs listed on the side of the video. The setup process was super easy and self-explanatory. Power the watch up by the bottom right button. Select the language from all the languages. You now have to download the OnePlus Health app from the Google Play Store. Speaking of the OnePlus Health app, this OnePlus watch will only work with any Android phones. You don't necessarily have to have a OnePlus smartwatch. As you can see, I have paired it up with my Samsung Note 20 Ultra. However, you cannot pair this OnePlus watch to any iOS devices. So if you have an iPhone, watch this video to suffice your curiosity of what this watch has to offer and check out the playlist of all the non-Apple smartwatches that will work with an iPhone. Moving on, you have to create an account with OnePlus. Sign in with the account and fill up all your details and allow all the needed permissions. Click on the add a new device and you should see the OnePlus watch pop up on the list. Click it and it will get paired instantly. You must allow access for on wrist call, notifications and turn on OnePlus health from the notification access in order for the watch to function properly. Select your preferred wrist and that is it. Now you might get a pop-up for device update as shown on this screen. Make sure to update it as it includes 110 sports mode and the AI outfit watch face along with other features. The entire update process for me took a very long time, about 20 minutes. Which makes sense as this watch does not have Wi-Fi. I wish it did, but comment down below how long it took for you to update. Okay, now the OnePlus Health app is pretty self-explanatory and easy to navigate from these three tabs at the bottom. The health dashboard has all the health data. Fitness is to track run or walk from the mobile app. And the manage tab includes all the settings. Account settings are from the top right. From the sync phone notification options, you can select all the apps that you want to get notified for. So if you're having notification issues, here is where you want to check and make sure the notifications are turned on for the apps that you're having issues with. Now, if you're someone who wants get up reminder or so-called inactivity reminder, turn this on to get notified after an hour of inactivity. Watch settings are under device settings. 
Now here is where you can add music and contacts. You can add up to 30 contact which is very helpful to call these contacts directly from the watch without needing to take out your phone. Weather is where you can change the unit from Celsius to Fahrenheit. You can edit your goal, turn on auto pause which is what I really like and it's quite robust. Under other health settings finally here is an option to track SPO2 during the sleep and auto workout detection. Let's go back and there is an option to unpair the watch from this phone. That is about it with this app. Now let's talk about the watch faces. So from the mobile app under the watch face you'll find AI outfit. This is amazing. You just take a picture of your outfit, select the color or pattern and the AI will generate some really cool watch faces which you can then add it up to your watch. It's pretty much like the my style watch faces on the Samsung smartwatches. Pretty cool. Likewise under photos you can add up to 10 images from your phone's gallery and add it up to your watch for custom background like this. Now under all you'll find a whole bunch of watch faces which are categorized by classic, dynamic, minimalist, joy, practical and sports. At the time of filming this video there are in total 50 watch faces but with the AI outfit and photo option you can create multiple watch face background. Now another cool feature is under my watch faces you can add up to 14 watch faces that you can directly toggle from the watch. Unlike most other budget watches you can only get 5 to a maximum of 10 watch faces. So to toggle the watch faces from your watch press and hold the watch face screen and you can toggle from those 14 watch faces. Now let's briefly talk about the user interface. Slide down from the watch face screen to access quick settings like do not disturb mode, brightness, find my phone, alarm, flashlight and settings with the battery level and the link icon to depict that the watch is connected to your phone. Slide right to access 3 widgets that include heart rate, sleep and music. I wish I can add more. Slide up to access notifications. Now the top right button is to access the menu which includes activities, workout, workout record, heart rate, SpO2, sleep, stress, breathing, phone, music, weather, alarm, stopwatch, timer, flashlight, barometer, compass, TV connect, camera settings and find my phone. Most of these are pretty self explanatory except few which I'll show you now like the breathing app where you can get 1 to 5 minute of breathing sessions where the watch gives you a nice animation but more importantly it vibrates during the inhalation. Now I find that the vibrations are not that pronounced. In terms of haptics the best up until now that I have experienced would be the Apple watch. Moving on under stress the watch measures your stress level under few seconds based off your heart rate data. Unlike on the Huawei watch GT2 you have to calibrate by answering few questions. The data is then transferred to your mobile app. Next is weather. You can check your current weather and even the forecast. As mentioned earlier you can change the unit from the mobile app. Now under alarm you can add alarms directly from the watch. You do get sound alerts with the option to cancel or delay the alarm. And for the most part it wakes me up but also wakes my other family member. To mute the alarm you have to turn on the do not disturb mode which I'll talk about later in the video. Now stopwatch is what I really like as it's not just about start and stop but you can use the shortcut key that is the bottom right button to tag various key moments. This is extremely helpful for sprinting, racing and other high endurance sports activity. Under timer you can get 1 to 30 minute of timer or you can even set a custom one. Flashlight is pretty basic and self explanatory and works great. Barometer works great and it's really good to have. So does the compass and it works great too. TV connect is unfortunately for OnePlus TVs only so it's pretty much useless for me. Camera control is a good feature to have but you can't see the camera feed. You have to manually turn on the phone's default camera app. From the watch you cannot switch from rear to front facing camera. The only use of this app is you can trigger a picture by the default 3 second timer which won't override any timer that you have on your phone's camera and you can't even see the captured image. But hey it's at least there for those who use it. Find my phone works like a charm every single time provided the watch is in the bluetooth range of the phone. I wish there was a find my watch feature from the mobile app to find the watch. 
Now let's talk about settings. Under Bluetooth headset, you can pair any Bluetooth headphones or earbuds, including Apple AirPods Pro. Display setting have always on display with three different watch face styles. Race to wake feature, which is pretty fast and responsive, and it auto turns off when in do not disturb mode. Auto brightness and screen on time, which sadly has only 8 seconds. I really wish there was an option to have more screen on time or an option to have the screen turned on for at least 10 to 20 minutes, which Amazfit GTR2 and Huawei Watch GT2 as well as Honor Watch has. Under sounds and vibration, you get settings like ringtone volume, silent mode. I really wish there was a shortcut for silent mode. Vibration alert, smart wake up for alarm, and my favorite, the Bluetooth disconnect reminder. Moving on, the function or the shortcut key is customizable. I prefer to have it set to the workout. Password is really good to have. You can set a four digit password which will lock the watch when it's not on your wrist. And when the watch is locked, you can't even see the notification or enter the menu. You can only see the time. Finally, under password, it's where for the wrist placement, language and system. Here's where you can reset, reboot or pair it to a new phone and about the device. Guys, if you made it this far in the video, I thank you so much for sticking around and I assume you wouldn't mind hitting that like button and also hit that subscribe button. Come on guys, it's free, anonymous and it will help out my channel a lot. Now let's talk about calls and notifications. Now my favorite part is that you can make a call directly from the watch either from those 30 contacts, the recent call log or you can even use the dial pad to punch in the number. Now you can receive, answer and even talk directly from the watch or any Bluetooth earbud that is paired to your watch. You will get a ringtone alert if your watch is not in the silent mode. Unfortunately, ringtones are not customizable. When you answer a call, you get an option to volume control, keypad and to end the call. Now the speaker and microphone quality during the call is not the best. It sounds croaky and picks up a lot of background noises, but it's there, I use it and I'm glad to have it. Now the unfortunate part is that at the time of filming this video, there is no third party calling app support. That means you can't even get a notification for an incoming call from apps like WhatsApp, Viber, Facebook Messenger, etc. And that really sucks. I hope they fix it and I'm sure not a lot of you would like this and this could be a deal breaker for someone. Nowadays even a lot of budget smartwatch cheaper than OnePlus watch offers this feature. So why not OnePlus? Now in terms of notification, you will receive all the notification from the apps that you have allowed from the mobile app settings, but you can't interact or reply to all those notifications except few. I personally hate that I can't even reply to an incoming text message from the Samsung's default messaging app. I can reply to WhatsApp messages, but the default replies are limited to OK, be right there, I'm in a meeting or I'm driving. Come on OnePlus, at least let us edit the default replies from the mobile app. I also prefer to have ability to delete or archive email as I get a ton of email throughout the day and if I can read the email from the watch and delete it straight from the watch, it would be a boost in my productivity. So with this watch, pretty much you have to reach for your phone as you can't even read a full email or notification. Forget about special characters, emojis and pictures, you won't be able to see them. So for me, calling and notification is a disappointment. You can find better options than this for the same price. Now in terms of music, this watch has a 4 gig of internal storage out of which you can only transfer mp3 files up to 2 gigs. But since this watch does not have Wi-Fi, the mp3 file transfer process is super time consuming. It takes a long time to transfer songs. So if you want to transfer like 50 songs, I would say do it overnight and make sure the watch is placed in charging. Also, if you are having issues with transferring songs, one tip would be to restart both your phone and watch and it should fix the problem. For those whom it matters, you cannot play music via the built-in speaker of the watch. You have to connect a Bluetooth earbud. This is not a deal breaker for me. Now once you connect a Bluetooth earbud, you get options to play or pause, skip a track forward or backward, control volume, change shuffle options, and from the settings, you get options to either play from the watch, control phone's music player and Bluetooth headphone options.
Now in terms of your phone's music player control, you can do pretty much the same as above, but you can't trigger the default music player to play a track from the watch. So you have to first start playing a track from the phone in order to control it, like play or pause, skip a track, or control the phone's volume. Once you trigger a music play from the phone, you can control pretty much any music app like Spotify, Deezer, Amazon Music, YouTube Music, etc. I can appreciate that the watch at least shows the title and the detail of the track being played. So in terms of music control, it's on par with other smartwatches in the same price category. Now in terms of fitness and health tracking, this watch can measure your stress level as shown earlier, measure your heart rate which is in sync with this medical grade finger oximeter. This watch can measure your real time blood oxygen saturation aka SpO2 which is also in sync with this medical grade finger oximeter. But on top of that it can also monitor your SpO2 level during sleep. Speaking of sleep, this watch does great with sleep tracking. It accurately detects sleep and wake up time shows a graph of your SpO2 level throughout the night with the lowest number. It gives you a sleep assessment score to quantify your sleep along with other sleep stage data like total deep sleep both in percentage and time, light sleep, awake time interruption along with sleep and wake up time. You can access your previous workout data like I took this watch for an hour long brisk walk with my Apple watch and you can see the OnePlus watch built in GPS track the walk precisely on par with the Apple watch. What it did not track properly was the calorie burned. You can see OnePlus watch shows 515 calories and Apple watch only shows 337 calories and the walk was brisk. I did not even walk fast or jog in between. So 515 calories seems too much. OnePlus watch recorded few meters less than Apple watch and it overshooted in terms of average heart rate. Apple watch never recorded a heart rate of 153 beat, beats per minute. As I said, it was a brisk walk, so I wouldn't recommend this watch for fitness enthusiasts. Again, I haven't tested this watch for other workouts, but this underperformance in a brisk walk makes me not take this watch for other endurance workout tracking. Speaking of workout, this watch does offer 110 different workouts. You'll find pretty much any workout from workouts that you want. Another drawback is when you are on a workout screen, you cannot customize or rearrange the health parameters, which is not a deal breaker, but for me, it is important to be able to quickly reply to a notification during a workout. But with this OnePlus watch, you can't exit the workout screen without ending the workout. Fortunately, you can control the music player. The best part about this watch is its battery life and design. The watch has 402 mAh battery size and it's pretty darn close to the Huawei Watch GT2 that has been my all time favorite watch in terms of battery life. OnePlus watch has a very fluid, fast, sharp and bright display and with moderate to high performance use it can easily go up to a week. Unlike other smartwatches, there was not a significant battery drain even when I used the GPS for 30 minutes outdoor walk and turn on the always on display. With light use, I bet this watch will easily make it to 2 weeks. The cherry on top is the super fast charging. With just few minutes of charging, you can literally make this watch go for days. So this OnePlus watch now replaces the Huawei Watch GT2 as my best battery life smartwatch. So here's my final honest verdict. I wouldn't recommend this watch as for $220. There are better options out there which would give you a better bang for your buck. Like model options for smaller wrist size as this watch is literally so big for a majority of wrists out there. This watch will not work for any Apple devices unlike there are other smartwatches which will perform better on both Apple and other smartphones. There is no app store. You can literally pick up Samsung Galaxy Watch Active 2 40mm for $250 and it has better features minus the battery life. This watch being an Android only watch lacks crucial features like ability to take Bluetooth audio calls from third party app like WhatsApp, Viber, Facebook Messenger, etc. It lacks ability to reply or interact with notifications. Fitness tracking is not that great as it's under and overshooting and it's not that consistent. Music transfer is super slow, built-in speaker is not that great. The plus point about this watch is its sleek design provided it fits your wrist, battery life, super fast charging, 
great display even outdoors but all this can be found in other smartwatches in the same price category so make sure you're subscribed as i'm going to compare this watch against all the other smartwatches comment down below if you would like to see a specific comparison and give this video a thumbs up i'll see you guys in the next video until then check out this video to find a better alternate to this watch